This is BZ Rieger, and what you're about to hear in the rest of this video is a recording with Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and myself on March 21st, 2018. I was nudged to do a little bit of um, context or setup before you hear the actual recording because um, it seems to dive right into mid conversation, and that's only because of all the things that have been unfolding uh, that I'm aware of that I can tune into. So I wanted to do the setup piece to help others kind of catch up if they have themselves not already been tuned in and aware just the expansiveness, the all-encompassingness, and the absolute total uh, reveal and unfolding of what's going on. This recording is Heather giving you some information about that? What I would ask is that you not only listen with your ears to what we're saying in the conversation, but that you listen with all of you. You are an amazing being, and you are big. You're not small. Uh, you can reach into you and understand, ask um Ask your soul the questions that you have and you will get all of the background information, all of the comprehension that will connect the different dots and let you see what's unfolding in a totally full-spectrum comprehensive way. So with that, have a listen to the conversation and I'll have some thoughts on the other side. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. All right. So it's uh, March 21st, and I've got Heather on the line, and it's... Uh, ten twenty nine a.m. Eastern time. <laughs> it may be a little loud in here. Girls have been in lockdowns just for a few days. We've been out, but it's fifteen women deep for a phone line. So you know, this will be the first time that I've been able to call. The last call that I made, I was saying how we needed to have forensic auditors check over the books to this facility because women were getting so getting charged for medical services and products that they're not receiving or even right. and that's just one thing that's going on and I mean they're, they're, they're running out of beds they're like four women deep in cells right now uh, they're running out of beds they run out of uniforms they're running out of food and they have state and fed uh, U.S. Marshal inspection supposedly Friday so it has been really hectic here, and there's not enough officers, and that's because they're having women officers work the central desk so that the men, because the men will refuse to lock down, they'll riot, they'll do all this, stuff. So they put the women in lockdown and have women officers go and support the, the male hog. Right. Because, you know, women, women don't unify and they don't, they're literally threatening in here that if they try to do grievances, like everyone tries to unify to do a grievance, uh, that they'll be locked down for inciting a riot. Right. You want to share with us what happened yesterday with the woman on the... Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of, just from my observations alone, and this has been going on since last year, but, you know, there were undercover investigators inside of most of the facilities in the Bureau of Prisons taking down all details. Uh, including their individual inmates themselves, said and state, that are taking copious notes as well. Med I usually don't step in or say a word. I just observe. Uh, but when there's medical or any kind of human rights abuse that is just it's beyond tolerable at all, because I, I know what the end result is. None of this will ever exist again. 
but this is immediate, like if there is imminent danger to someone bodily or in any way, then I'll step in. Uh, feds typically have a different status all around. So when you say something, it doesn't do so anyway. This woman, her name is Crystal Busey, and um, she has a known history of seizures since she was, you know, early adult. Not drug induced, not, nothing like that, just anxiety induced. Uh, and she's actually is seen by a neurologist and all this stuff, and she's on uh, Keppra and other seizure medicines. Well, since she came in here, and every time she's come into the facility, uh, she has uh, given them their information, plus her neurologist that she sees and the medicine she's on, and they refuse to put her on her medicine on a seizure medicine. So she's in here, in the last, I think it's 36 hours, she's had three seizures, grandma. Yesterday, within four hours, she had two. The first one that I witnessed, first one I witnessed, uh, one seizure actually occurring, and then the second one, she's next door to me, and you could hear her, and she was on a top bunk when she had that one. Oh. The first one that I witnessed, she went up, because she, she's had them for so long that she um, went to the officer. She can tell when the onset comes on, and she was flushed, she was red, she was crying, and she's like, I'm, it's happening, it's starting to happen. And the officer, basically, uh, as Crystal was kind of crumpling down and, and falling downwards, the officer grabbed her by the back of the shirt, literally held her up, and walked her to the slider. So in between, like in this pod, there's a slider, and they lock you in, um, they open one door, kind of like the bank, they lock you, uh, inside the slider and then open the other door. That's how they keep people from, you know, rushing out. They just put her in the slider, left her there. So none of us knew what's going on because they black out the windows and the slider so you can't see in this particular spot. But uh, she was in there by herself, and I just sat there, and all of us watched this happen. So I walk up to the office, and I'm like, did I really just see you? She's having a seizure. Did I really just see you? hold her up, walk her, and drop her in a, into the slider by herself while she's having a seizure? And the officer goes, don't worry about it. He gets on the phone. All the women in here, it was really beautiful to actually see, was all these women were like, is she okay? They were trying to talk to her through the door. Uh, one of the workers, she's an, um, she's an inmate here, but she works in the kitchen. She's one of the ones that lets us know, you know, about the inspections that are coming up and what's going on outside the pod. Anyway, she was put in the slider with her, but not until, you know, Crystal has no recall to any of this. Um, this woman knows her on the outside as well, and so she was toning with her the entire time, speaking with her very gently, talking her through it, but Crystal has no recall of it. Mm -hmm. And medical never came down. Apparently, she came back in. I was like, where is she? Is she all right? And... The other, another officer came in, and I was like, what's going on? She is, and they left her in the slider. It was over a half hour. No medical came or anything like that. Found out she got put back on herself. We all went into lockdown. So when we came back out, I was like, you know, I saw her in a room through the window, and I said, are you okay? And she was up on the top bunk, and I'm going, what the fuck are they putting her in? Excuse my language. What are they putting her on a top bunk for? I go to the officer and I was just like, you know, what's going on? She's had a grandma seizure. Why is she up on the top bunk? All this other stuff. So anyway, I said, I want a grievance because they refused to get a, a supervisor. I was like, I want a grievance. This is the form that they make you fill out. And on the form and in the handbook itself, it says that you have to talk to a pot officer and then a supervisor before you can even put the grievance in. Otherwise, they ignore them. Right. Well, they refused to go and get a supervisor. And I sat there and I was like, do you know that the other officer literally grabbed her and walked her to a slider? Why she was having a seizure and just put her in the slider by herself? And she made it so that none of us could see whether she just threw her down or laid her down. We're not sure. I don't want to comment on that. All I know is she left her in there. And they made sure we couldn't see her. And the officer was like, I go, I want to talk to a supervisor. And she was like, well, no, there's no supervisor here. I was like, Thornberry, Corporal Thornberry is supposedly on site. Is she coming through? She goes, well, I don't know. I was like, okay, we need agreement. And she goes, well, she's the one that has to make it. And I go, really? I go, well, one for her and one for me because 
I want to know, is this protocol, is this how you're going to treat me if I have a seizure? I said, I've had one grandma seizure in my entire life, and now I know why. So and my cousin died while she was having, she had epilepsy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, I'm familiar with how it feels to have one as well as what you're supposed to do and not do when someone does have one. Yeah, well, not drop them on a cement floor all by themselves no. the way they can smack so I was, and hurt. And leave them there. And I said, uh, it's, and she goes, well, they were watching her through the cameras. And I was like, are you kidding me? I said, that's <laughs> protocol. Is that how you're going to treat me if I have a, I have a seizure? I mm-hmm. need no. So that I know I want a grievance. Because if this is your protocols and process, then I need a grievance. <laughs> and she was like, well, she's not coming through. And I go, fuck. Oh. And, and she goes, I, I can't give you a grievance. I go, then I want U.S. Marshals on the phone right now. Because if this is how you're going to treat me if I have a seizure, and who knows, I might have one. <laughs> I don't feel like you. So she filled out too. I took one to this crystal room, but they still had her on the top bunk. While, right before I, or excuse me, right after, actually, I emailed you right after she had a second grandma seizure. Yes. On her top bunk. And there was a nurse in here for medical stuff, so they came with the officer, but they refused to go in the room. And mind you, what I've noticed, at least in the facility, is medical staff will not even come near you unless you filled out the, pro, you know, the HIPAA and, and all that other stuff. That, and they just don't want to touch anyone. It's like, what? I mean, they definitely are following protocols designed by the church. And so this poor woman, she's having another grandma seizure on a top bunk, mind you, which is cement floor, cement walls, and you know, steel bunk bed. So they finally get her out. She's finished with her seizure. They finally get her out. And they still had her on a top bunk until just about 20 minutes, well, no, about an hour and a half ago. Uh-huh. Uh, made sure that she was swapped. And she should be on a boat, which means on a floor. And right. Plastic boat. So, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so anyways, um, she did a grievance about... You know, and, and they didn't even come and see her. So after a second grandma seizure within less than four hours, she got sent to medical. They put her in an observation room, which has no beds. No, they have a medical rooms with beds. But they put her in a room that has steel benches all the way around it and says that's their observation room. And she's like, can I at least get Depra, which is a seizure uh, medication? And the nurse looks at her and goes, what's Depra? And she looks at her and goes, how, you're a nurse. How do you not know what Zephyr is? Right. And the nurse was just like, we don't, have, we don't have that stuff. We can't get that out. And she was like, okay, can I just get a Tylenol then and just send me back to my room? And they kept her there for a couple hours just for observation and then just sent her back to her room. That's it. So these are anxiety. Who knows if they'll happen again, but we talked to her, the crystal nurse. I was like, if you feel the onset again, turn to any woman in this pod and tell her you're having an attack come on, you need help. The rest of right. us, we'll all, we'll all gather around, don't worry about it. And the Fed, Fed inmates will handle, at least I will, <laughs> so, with the officers, we'll, we'll get something done here. And so let me ask you for, um, that's what happened. Let me just ask you for a minute, because we're on the time with the phone here. So, um, is this just that they hire the correct people to be heartless? Is there some kind of incentive no, that they no. get for cruelty? Or? No. These officers, I'm watching quietly. These officers do what they're told, and they're, literally they're officers quitting. In fact, four leave next month, I think. Or they've already put their notices in. Um, the officers are doing what they're told, and they're browbeated by their supervisors. Their supervisors are browbeated by their supervisors, and it's just this whole shebang. Now, when I came in, nobody knew what I was in here for. It's sort of like the Federal Reserve lying to, you know, Parker Steele in the FBI and Knox office. <laughs> not telling them who I am, and then, then having to find out that they're thrown under a bus and, you know, that they were hustled. And right. By the Federal Reserve. We had the same thing going on here. They had no idea, and I'm watching. These women, as soon as I came into this pod, um, some of the women had been in the other pod with me, but they made sure I had a tablet, and I have one 24-7, so that I can get emails out to you guys. Um, if I need to get something to Francis for U.S. Marshal Sanchez, right. get that to him. So they make sure I have a tablet 
and you guys make sure I have goal passes, and I'm able to actually email when there's emergencies. And, but we're dealing, right now I feel it's more important, okay, and this is why I haven't called, made phone calls or uh, recordings, is because a lot of times the focus goes on one. When right. the focus is supposed to be on everyone and how yeah. recognized and incredible and brilliant you all are. So I've been quiet so that as all these other You have one minute left. I'll call you back, so don't worry. Okay. Uh, okay. All these brilliant lights are self-recognized as well as recognized. That's correct. Okay, so that's why I've been quiet, doing my thing, and I'm in, I've got this part covered. I've got this whole grid, right, the whole BOP, the whole potential facilities on the planet covered. So nobody else has to come in. <laughs> physically, anyway. Um, these, they're incredible. Um, even the officers, I love all the officers, even some of the corporals, the sergeants. The, you can just see the hierarchy and the lack of information. It's a need to know. And so the, each level is trying to figure out what the level above them knows because they just know that I'm not who they thought I was. Right. So I just sit quiet and I observe, and there are a lot of women that have taken notes on everything. It's all being recorded. You have mold everywhere in this pod. The showers, I don't even go in. Um, you have those little bugs where the, when you have mold, there's these little bugs that show up. Thank you for using Securus. Goodbye. Hi. Okay. Keep going. So I'm not even quite sure where we were, but all I can tell you is yesterday, what was beautiful was watching all these women in here, including observing myself, and watching how everyone chose to respond. There's a difference between reaction and response. Uh -huh. And there was, there was application of consciousness by these women and how they chose to respond. And it was beautiful to see, including myself, because when I get into that <laughs> one thought, and whoever is causing someone else harm, they're on their knees. Right. And I don't even touch them. Please. Not as a little bit of Okay? So I sat there and I could feel those tendrils coming out of me, recognizing that officer and the fact that she's just doing what she's been told. Um, and there are a lot of unofficial orders that have been made and going around right now. Nothing in writing. You know, nothing that can be pointed to, but unofficial order. And so yesterday was my response. It was, you know, I, I typically look at something, I can see the ignorance, okay, and then it's been tried. So I usually go right to those that are knowing who allow this stuff to exist and actually have enforced these systems to be run the way they are. Right. And that's who I go and I directly deal with that in my way. And they know it. So there was a lot of conscious application and application of consciousness by myself and by all these other officers or all these other inmates and it felt really good to go in and see them actually observing themselves and observing each other. You know, there you're you have a lot of unity going on right now just because of this one incident but also others. So we're it sounds it sounds like they're making a ch they're they're at the point where they're making choices outside of the false construct to their heart and and choosing a, a different unveiling for themselves. Absolutely. And, and, you know, right now, this facility is overmatched with women. They don't know what to do. They're out of bed. They're out of clothes. They're running out of food. Uh, we've had the same dish three times this week or four times this week, and, and that's unheard of. Um, and yeah. while we're on the food, just tell us about the, I want to hear from your voice. The, well, I use that uh, term loosely. The, no, I know, but I want you to describe the meat with the cans and what it says on oh the. Oh, my God. Uh, the kitchen, kitchen crews are reporting, the ones that are working in there, and they usually have the men cook for the women, but inside they have, like, uh, the meat that they feed us. They usually do two hot, two hot meals, apparently when the state and the feds come to inspect, we'll have three hot meals, because that's what everyone's supposed to be having. Mm -hmm. Instead, they usually serve a meal in the morning and a meal in the evening, and then they give you a staff lunch with meat. And the meat that they use says institution use only. Uh, some of the facilities that I toured on the 30-day tour said inmate consumption only. 
uh, but they usually say institutional uh, consumption only or not for human consumption. So that's why I was saying they need to have undercovers inside the kitchen in every single facility, but that's just one part of it. They put additives inside the drink, um, at least in some of the facilities that I stayed in on the 30 day tour. Uh, but there's undercover agents, and I met with quite a few of them on that 30 day tour that are, and they're from different agencies around the world. You know, there was a lot of our people, American agencies, you know, and these agents are they're grateful that this is all changing. You know, and you have Trump who putting together, you know, and this is this is where it comes down to it is there's nothing for that for show anymore. Okay, this is completely changing. It changes when it doesn't. It's only for show. That's when cards cards tumble, which is what Russia and China are seeing happen to themselves right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. China always uses Russia as a shield, so pay attention to Russia. I mean, why China goes behind the scenes and does their thing, such as, like, making the president in perpetuity <laughs> or nationalizing their central bank and letting them decide policy and protocols and laws for the entire financial system globally. Right. Which i got to tell you, all that's been happening behind the scenes. They right. don't want the public to know it. And it's been happening for millennia. But what's beautiful about it is now everyone can see it because when you see something that that doesn't resonate, that doesn't work, that's the only time you know to change it. Most people would never have thought China was running or the Asian families were running things behind the scenes. All these right. millennia. Yeah, you know, all the way from before America was even quote unquote discovered, because I can tell you that was all contrived to. Right, all way you know, way up to before the known history, what, so to say. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. the history is a sham. Okay. Right. So I won't even get into any of that. I'm just letting you know right now, and I'll send you this girl's name just in case her family's out there. Because okay. A lot of these women, should, some of these women should not even be in here. Just from the cases that I've listened to and everything else, you have, I have watched. They are crowding the jails on purpose because the whole judicial system is out of money. Right. All right. You have all the, all the, the trillions, hundreds of trillions that were stolen and taken overseas, and yet it was just allowed to happen so that there could be a money trail to follow through DOD. And it, I mean, all the money was stolen through DOD, okay? New York, uh, Federal Reserve Bank, New York. Uh, but everything's tracked. Every single criminal is known. I don't care whether it's pedophilia. I don't care whether it's money laundering. I don't care whether it's, uh, you know, drug running. Every single criminal is known. Their operations are known. And everything has been recorded. And the reason, and just, I'm just going to set the frame so people can understand a little bit. So the reason all of this is happening and unfolding or a "Quote unquote," allowed to be to happen and unfold right this minute is so that it can be completely wrapped up, all detailed and all in. Is that correct? Forevermore. Yep. Okay. It's, if the people don't know what's been going on behind the scenes and it's not made visible, how do they know what to change? That's right. And Everything. People <laughs> on this planet that are now going to make the decision of how things run, not a few for the mass and keep the mass completely, you know. That's correct. Ignorant. Uh, and that was the only way the Federal Reserve System could actually go, because the first two versions of the Federal Reserve, you know, got mixed. One by Andrew Jackson. All right? Right. So this is, it's over. But it's Federal Reserve, EIS, China itself, who owns, you know, most of the world debt, quote unquote, or pretends that they do, and prison bonds. It's all gone by their own choice. We have worked for years, for seriously the last five years, they had five years to clean everything up and change the practices. They did not, so this is what happened. They lose everything. Right. But in losing everything, everyone, including them, gains everything. They're just right. upset about losing control all over everyone. But that they've always known, and I've been very vocal about this and worked very diligently with them, but this is where compassion comes in because it's not just compassion for one or a few. It's compassion for the all. Okay, they've made their choice, but it's being implemented as we speak. So their fraudulent financial system is gone. And if that means the whole financial system's gone, well, that just tells you it was all fraud. Right. Can it be run lawfully? Yes, absolutely. That's what we've been telling them. 
So A I I B to the one Gu Rong Ding. I'll write that name down for you soon. I spell it Gu Rong Ding. Carl Lang. It's all those guys with A I I B as well as Hen uh, Henry Todd and everybody else. Um, we're planning for a long time for A I B bricks. All of that. You know, Russia's been trying to grapple power from China, uh, and I use those in quotes because, mind you, China doesn't mean just your Republic of China. Russia doesn't just mean your Federation, or, you know, your Russian Federation. Uh, we're talking about those that were behind the veil, the team. Right. Okay, so I use those terms loosely. Do I know who they are? Yes. Do they know who they are? <laughs> Does they know? Yes. <laughs> Rothschilds, Rockefellers, those are all just Okay. Right. Whether it's uh, Bill Gates Sr., Bill Gates Jr., really they're just brokers. So, you know, and there was a huge coup or takeover within even those uh, controllers that was happening. But it's all been foreseen. It was all taken care of. This is the moment where everyone just makes choices. So, you know, I'm in here. <laughs> I'm very, very transparent about what I do. People ask. I don't. Right. You know, I agreed to do this when I was in D.C. I agreed to do this part of the sting operation. And mind you, this is just one of hundreds that have been going on. Some even longer than the one that I did, okay? Uh, Obama did an incredible job setting up the Saudis and setting up Russia, as well as China and everyone else. Clinton did a great job, and he wasn't even aware of it, when he centralized everyone under the Economic Espionage Act so that they would use USD is a world currency. That mm -hmm. was how we were able to freeze everyone so they couldn't do reevaluations of currency. That's why they can't do cryptos. And when they do try to do cryptos, it just crashes the system. It's not going to happen anymore. And everyone made that choice. We're just implementing it now. Okay, so let me just, um, because we're running on clock here, so for all those listening and they're thinking, well, well, I'm going to ignore some of the questions, but um, one question might be, what can they do? And obviously, as they're moved to do, but it's to start to really notice, would it be fair to say, start to really notice what's going on and feel into all of that and, and move your energy to an expand the state with help? Yeah, well, focus on the end result. It's all over. This is all over. Right. So focus on the end result and what it feels like when you actually experience the ending and the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Feel what that feels like. Um, you, you, everyone knows all to do in every moment. I'm sorry, I'm not going to play. There's no leaders. There's no followers. Right. Right. Everyone's a freaking master, and I recognize that, and I've always recognized that, and there are those that are recognizing. Now it's self-recognition. So self-recognize, self-love. Go in and apply all you've got and have fun and be as creative as you can. Right. You know, so that was... Every moment, everyone's bringing the all of them in. You know, one of the greatest psychops ever done was Freud, Sigmund Freud, telling you that dreams, you know, this is dreams. <laughs> and you know what? Now we've got to interpret that. You know, even Socrates and all those guys never took it to that level. Never. Right. Sigmund, you know, that Freud was, was one of the best psychops ever. I mean, I won't even go into Orson Welles and all those other guys, but all I can tell you is you, everyone knows all to do. Your masters, myself personally, I'm going to put myself in these situations had I not truly, not only believed it, but it's right. it. Right. Okay? And all these women are like, why, why would you do this? And you got Randy, I get Randy and what he's feeling and all that. All I can tell him and tell everyone else is, I chose to be here. Okay? I chose to do this thing operation. Not that I chose to be in here. I told them, I'm not going to be in here, but, you know, it's costing them it's costing them quadrillions every minute that I'm in here. And mm -hmm. all that is going to be used for the restructuring. But then again, we also have all the ITAC coming on and, all, and everyone's abilities and everything else. It just skips right over all that. Right, so absolutely. There, but at least we covered all the bases. Yes. You know, and I'm here until this is finished. My family's not happy with that. I get that. Randy's not happy with that. I get that. But everyone mm -hmm. did all that they felt to do. You know, well, and, absolutely not. Yeah, and let's bring it, you know, the idea, whole idea is to bring it home to a close so we can create all, all new. 
this is all, what is it? Life is but a dream. Do you know what? Make all <laughs> you dare make it. After this, I'm retiring. Why? Yes. None of this will exist anymore anyway. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it's not a big deal. It's great. So it's just communicating with each other, standing up and be the hero that you've always dreamed. You have one minute left. That you always dreamed you've been. Experience it. Pull all of you together. Do it. I Absolutely. Do. Absolutely. All right. Fabulous. Love I love you. you before they cut us out. Big hugs, and I'll get this out. Much love to you, Heather. My love to everyone. Thank you. And I'll send you a, an email with her name and her ID in so hopefully her family can see what's going on here. Okay. Cool. I love will you. do that. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Step up. Step all in to the amazing to the amazing being that you truly are. You are an Ascended Master right here, stepping fully into that. There's nothing outside of you. There's no experts outside of you. There's no gurus outside of you. You have that knowledge, that power, that amazing creativity. Be the hero you always imagine yourself to be, as Heather says, or imagine being, if it's for the first time, an amazing powerful, resilient, expansive, joyous, deliciously creative, resourceful, fired up, go get them being and finish out the end of this story and create the beginning of the next story we're all creating. You do this. You are the event. This is all about each one of us all together creating the end, close, completion of this and the beginning of all. Not outside, not waiting for the memo, the headline, the news, whatever it is. It's all an inside job. Check the IUV for this post of this recording for an update information that I got from Heather following our call on Crystal. Much love to you all. We've got this.